what is up guys this is Tito back with another video and today in this video I'm gonna be reviewing the Poco F5 as you can see from the background I have used this device for a long time now more than 25 days it's almost a month and if you have to get the nifty little details of the software of the normal user experience and stuff right after I use the device you can watch the for after 48 hours of usage of the device that you may be looking for but today let me talk about the long-term impressions yes this device does feel a lot more lighter when you compare it with any other device and I have a K20 Pro, I have a Note 10 Pro and it definitely feels a lot more lighter than those devices because it is 181 grams or something like that and with the screen size of this 6.67 inch I guess this seems a lot lighter and that's because of the plastic build. Yes, the back side and stuff has plastic build. I have a cover slapped on it. I'll link this particular case in the description box below so don't worry and of course I'll also list a uh, tempered glass if you guys want that. You may be hating the plastic build of the frame of the back panel and stuff but that's how it is even the Motorola is 40 right now which has launched for about 30,000 the same price has plastic builds but yes the frame on that I guess is metal here you are getting overall totally plastic build but yes it's always not a bad thing to have a polycarbonate body most of the time plastic or polycarbonate will survive a lot more drops than a glass back phone so that's why plastic may be superior in that case if you're someone who drops your device a lot maybe go for this one because you won't be having any issues with the back panel like cracking or something like that and of course this device has a 6.67 inch AMOLED display which is a 120 hertz display and it definitely looks so cool and even with the full brightness and stuff I would say the display definitely gets bright I think it's about 600 nits with normal kind of usage and for outdoor usage it will be about like 1000 plus nits I guess but yeah, overall I would say the brightness of this even in outdoors has been like good enough I would say for my usage so I didn't find any issues with the display's brightness and there are no like flickering or something like that I did not notice anything like that on this particular display and it is a beautiful looking display you can see again my first impressions kind of video in that I have actually compared it with side by side with the K20 Pro and the Note 10 Pro to actually get you an idea about the overall display's quality on this device now let's talk about a little bit of performance under 30,000 this is only one phone where you are getting the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 and this is the latest kind of CPU from Snapdragon and the performance here is insane while the device stays a lot more cooler when compared to these kind of performance segment and yes the mediatek and stuff will heat up a lot when compared to this one even while scoring below this one so that is how it is i feel this is like one of the best cpus that you can get about for 30,000 in 2023. The Android score and stuff goes above 9 lakh plus. And I have even seen some of the scores going above 11 lakhs. But yeah, I think those were the 12 GB variant. I have the 8 plus 256 GB variant. Even with heavy tasking, the CPU actually stays a lot more cooler. Even while gaming and stuff, you will see your CPU temperature or the overall phone temperature will not extend above 42 degrees. So that's a huge thing. And yes, it's summertime. It's getting a lot more heated up. Even today, I have seen the device was getting heated up while I was heavily using it. The heating, when compared to other devices, it's a much less of a heat because when the outdoor temperatures feels like is about 49 degrees, the phone is staying 42 degrees. So yes, that's a plus. Now let's talk about two of the cons that I feel like this is a bummer totally for this particular device. And that is again the SD card slot. You may be used to with a SD card slot in this kind of price segment of a device. You might be looking for it. But yeah, you won't get the SD card slot over here. No micro SD card slot is present. You will only get a dual SIM card slot. And with this kind of like benchmarks and stuff with this kind of performance, <laughs> the cameras, I would say, yes, it's a good camera. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad camera. But yes, in terms of video, I feel this one should have included the 4K 60fps option. Simply, it doesn't offer that. It only has up to 4K 30fps with the rear camera which is again in my opinion is a bummer because back in the day even like mid-range devices for 14 15,000 had 4k 60 fps but now even if you are paying 30,000 you are getting 4k 30 fps only is that fair let me know down there in the comments now in case if you want to see a full video with the rear camera i have already shot a couple of videos with the rear camera of this device and i actually uploaded some custom rom videos and stuff on my youtube channel you can check them out from the description and i'll show you the front camera video sample right now 
So the good thing is you can actually shoot 1080p 60fps with the front camera but yes it, it doesn't have 4k or something but yes this is how the front camera looks in indoor conditions it's night time but I have a lot of lights like in my room there is a tube light right there two over there and I have a video light right here so yes the lighting condition right now is much much better when compared to like other rooms but yes this is how it looks it might be looking a little bit overexposed even in daytime but if you just turn off lights and stuff then definitely will not be that much because there are some amount of noise that I think I have seen so that's how it is and this is how it sounds like with the internal microphone of the device and if I just try to move around with this video and this is how it looks like so yeah, the 1080p 60fps is pretty good I would say with the front camera and you might be liking it for vlogging or something like that if you want 1080p 60fps of course. And again this is how it sounds like with the internal mics of the device and I feel the microphone quality in this device is good enough. One more con about the camera. I would say just do not shoot videos with the rear or front camera in the H.265 codec on this device at least on the MIUI version 14.0.3 because I have seen a lot of like glitches and stuff a lot of pain while editing. I was trying to edit a HEVC recorded video on this particular device that is a 1080p 60fps video but as soon as I slapped that in Premiere it was a pain the video was choppy overall and even in timeline and stuff I couldn't scroll even with my GTX 1070 hardware encoding support so that's how it is I would say do not simply go for the H.265 codec on this particular device while shooting because that is simply not optimized I feel and just to shoot with the H.264 or normal kind of video codec that will be a lot more efficient and you can just like edit that footage anywhere you won't be facing any problems. With the Poco F5 and the Redmi Note 10 Pro it both has a notch with the front camera but here you will see the front camera on the Poco F5 has a black border if you're noticing it's a hardware kind of thing so on the Poco F5 you will see a black border right there but on the Redmi Note 10 Pro you won't see that kind of thing it only appears while you are using the front camera let me show you it's a software kind of thing let me show you okay so it doesn't show in the lock screen but yes there is a black border whenever you are using the front camera with a software black border but here I think it's a hardware kind of thing where you will find a black border on the front camera if you are not willing to have a notch it will bother you so be careful about that there is always a black border on the front camera on the Poco F5 and in terms of camera hardware I would say yes it does have a 64 megapixel sensor but it also has a 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor which is really good it's not bad but I do miss a super macro lens which is present in the Redmi Note 10 Pro but here the quality of the macro is not that good it has a macro but it's the quality is not that good and it also has a 2 megapixel trash camera I think so yeah just ignore that the camera is decent you can watch all the camera samples from the card right there even you can see the front camera selfies and stuff in that video now let's talk about the buttons the power button I feel in my unit it's a little bit mushy once you are like tapping it on the middle it's pretty tactile but yes on the bottom or on the top it's a little bit mushy feeling power button but yes the volume rockers are solid and it just feels awesome like it's a tactile button on the volume rockers and the finger bit scanner here is really fast no problems whatsoever that you will face just notice how fast it unlocks so yeah no issues whatsoever with the finger bit scanner at all and I would say my experience with the finger bit scanner has been amazing even with a little bit of water in your hand it just unlocks straight up no problems now even though I have the 8 GB RAM variant I would say the RAM management even with the 8 GB RAM variant is like sufficient I would say for me at least let me show you the RAM management right now just check out the RAM management I just like open multiple apps randomly in a day and I just see like even when I had the device locked for two to three hours the app will still be opened and that's a really good thing to see in MIUI because MIUI is a lot of like it force closes apps and stuff in the background but yes I would say the RAM management right now in MIUI as well is amazing I can't wait to slap a custom ROM on this device we'll talk about that in the later part of this video talking about network connectivity I didn't have any issues while like calling or something while switching to Bluetooth device or just 
disconnecting Bluetooth device while in a call and plugging in a 3.5 headphone jack. I didn't face any issues whatsoever with calling. So the call quality and stuff has been really, really amazing over here. So network is solid and you can actually <laughs> connect to two Wi-Fi devices because it also has Wi-Fi 60 and stuff. And of course, 5G is working perfectly fine in my area and I'm getting 1000 megabits plus speeds. The 5G reception as well is super solid. So I would say definitely if you're looking for a 5G device, you can consider this one. But yes, of course, a lot of people will go for the Moto H40 because there you will get a lot of trust, but you are also getting a media tech there. Choose depending what you need. On 5th June 2023, I noticed in the Telegram channel of Poco F5, the kernel source for Poco F5 has been released. I was surprised. So that was awesome. Now today, when I'm shooting this video, it's 6th June. And yes, already there is Evolution X ROM getting developed right away. There is the first build already live. It did boot at least the first build, the first test build, you can say. So that actually did boot and there are force closes and stuff because of course it's a test build, the first build ever. Maybe in the future, there will be a lot of custom ROMs for this device. And that is the reason why I have went for this device. And custom ROMs, if you want that, definitely this is what you choose in 2023 one more thing is the storage well you are getting a ufs 3.1 storage over here and the good thing is even the base variant of this device comes with a 256 gb variant and that is to of course ufs 3.1 and with that the speeds the like copying the extracting zip files and even the installing apps everything you can notice the speeds over here if you haven't used UFS 3.1 before, I know it's not the latest. There is UFS 4.0 or 4.1 already. But yeah, I would say for the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2, this is a good kind of storage and the speeds and stuff, 1000 plus megabits of sequential speeds, I would say read and write is really good for this kind of price bracket. What is up guys, this is Tino Bank with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video, I'm going to show you the latest MIUI OE version. This is the CN. So the speakers on the Poco A5 isn't that great. So if you compare it with other devices, it may sound a little bit lower, but yes, even with full volume, I would say, yes, it's not that loud, nothing to boast about, I would say, but yes, overall, it's a decent speaker. The battery life that I'm getting is amazing. It's 10 plus hours of screen on time with estimated Aku battery app numbers. But yes, I have seen the battery life here is insanely good with the 5000 mAh battery. It's giving amazing performance. So no issues whatsoever with the battery life. And with this 67 watt fast charger present in the box, it charges like in about 40 to 45 minutes. I mean, zero to hundred, not like in 45 minutes. I'm not talking about like 80% or something like that. It does that in 30 minutes. I would say they should have provided a type C port here. It, they are still giving this USB A which might be a bummer, but of course, yeah, the cable is included in the box, so you can definitely use it, no problems with that. And of course, on the other side, you are getting a Type-C port, and the fast charging is again working perfectly, no problems with that. And once you really get used to these 67 watt and stuff fast charging, it's really hard to go back to a phone where you do not get these kind of fast charging. If you really need wireless charging, if you really need 144 hertz display and a lot of those things, and if you really don't want to have the best of the best performance in your price segment, go for the Moto H40. But otherwise, pro user, you can say, or if you are an advanced user who wants to flash custom ROMs on your device, then definitely I would say Poco F5 is gonna be a rock solid device for you. What happens if the motherboard just dies? What happens if it doesn't boot? What happens if the front camera suddenly doesn't open? Yeah, that's a confusion that's only time can tell after using this device. I have been using this for about a month. I didn't face any kind of hardware problems on this particular device. Nothing to be complaining about. Everything is just super solid on this device. And this is one of the best MIUI experiences that you can get that I'm using MIUI for about a month now. I don't stay on a particular custom ROM for even more than two to three days. So yeah, I would say it's a really solid experience that you are getting, but you need to remember that it's a POCO, so motherboard problems may appear out of nowhere and you might be getting a little bit worried about that. So if you're worried about that, don't consider this device, this is not for you. This is purely, I would say, as of right now, for risk takers until and unless POCO delivers on their promise and they have improved on their chip manufacturing kind of facilities 
and they have actually did improvements on this only after two years we can tell because only then the warranty will end and after that what happens to these devices i will be using this poco a5 as long as i can and of course i'll be flashing custom roms on this one even i have faced the cpu problem on my redmi note 10 pro that i had to do the cpu rebolling and stuff so in terms of that department i would say yes this device does come with two years of warranty that might be relief for a lot of people but yes even with that i would say i have seen a lot of people complaining that xiaomi service center just rejects the warranty if there is a scratch in the device that's just like not ethical i would say if you have confusion in terms of warranty stuff and you cannot believe poco brand with the motherboard and stuff i would say yes just stay away from it go for the motorola h40 but yes if you are someone who enjoys miui if you're someone who enjoys performance and if you're someone who is looking for a device where you can slap custom roms in the future one of the most boss moment for the poco a5 is that it has a headphone jack also includes an ir blaster and you can just slap a 3.5 mm wired headphone which you cannot simply do with a lot other devices like i think the moto h40 which is the competition don't forget the IR Blaster, which will come in handy for a lot of like device controls and you can just control any device which supports IR remotes. And this headphone jack and the IR Blaster on this device is definitely a pro for me at least. You cannot really get this with a Moto H40. This is what in my opinion makes the Poco F5 a much more superior purchase because it has the headphone jack and a IR Blaster. Yes, it doesn't have wireless charging but not everyone needs that not everyone has a wireless charger sitting right there in their desks my experience overall even in miui with performance has been one of the best right now you are getting the miui dialer right now you are getting the miui messaging app and stuff all those things and it doesn't have much ads or something don't get me wrong there is the git apps and stuff but yes in miui for poco i would say it's a lot less ad that you will see when compared to a redmi device so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tiro from kdn signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one